Okay. Um, I have a question for you, Professor. Sure. Um, it's from Mr. Ayoaki Fair, and he goes, um, first, I'll, I'll run a few questions. Um, what are your views on matters that concern us in the diaspora? Good. In terms of diaspora voting, yeah. investing remittances, Absolutely. a diaspora bond, and relocating packages. What would you do when you become president? Yeah. And Mr. Adebi Yadeshi also said, um, President Olusegun Obasanjo repaid Nigerians' foreign debts. Yes. Other successive leaders have ensnared the country again. Yeah. How will you repay the country's debts? Yeah. So those two questions. Okay, very good. Yeah. yeah. Now, first of all, let's talk about the diaspora. Yeah. I am going to be the first diasporan president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Because you've lived a good I've, percentage I've, of your uh, yeah, in you different know, parts of the world. In different parts of the world, and I've been a professor um, in the U.S. after serving the government of Nigeria as deputy governor of the Central Bank. Now, I understand the pain and the frustration and the potential mm. of the diaspora. Here's my diaspora plan. Number one, 20, if I become president in 2019, 2019 will be the last election in which the diaspora will not vote. From 2023, there will be diaspora voting. How feasible is that? Why not? What's wrong with it? Even right now, INEC is studying it, but they are not probably going to be ready for 2019. Or political wills keeping them back? Maybe. We, we don't know. But when I become president, the political will will materialize immediately. Mm. Because as president, I believe that no citizen of Nigeria, whether you're in the diaspora or you're inside Nigeria, should be denied the right to vote. If you're a citizen of Nigeria, you should vote. We should be able to organize diaspora voting at embassies and consulates around the world. Because the diaspora contributes a lot. Of course, of course. Why should they? They con they they're sending about twenty to thirty billion dollars every year into the economy. Recorded. Uh, then, uh, Probably yeah, more than that. Recorded, more than. That. And mm. then when it comes to votes, you can't know. So there will be diaspora voting from twenty twenty three. Now here's my real plan for the diaspora beyond the votes. Mm -hmm. I believe that Nigeria's resurgence will be driven by people in the diaspora. Because they've been exposed to better management systems, yeah. better technology, better ways of doing things, more discipline. Yeah. Therefore, they must play a decisive role in the Nigeria of the future and the Nigeria of my vision yeah. as president. We will create a structure for the systematic engagement of the diaspora. I'm not going to be a president of Nigeria that will come out and do uh, visits and say, oh, come home. Just come home and serve your country and walk away. No plan. For you to come home what is the plan we are going to turn the nigerian diaspora com uh, commission which has been created by the national assembly into a world-class institution here's what that diaspora commission will do it will go around various foreign countries and map the nigerians and their skills and numbers and their numbers then we will match the result of that mapping with the needs at home and then we will plan a way to bring back those who are interested in coming back, especially in the public sector, mm. to help us plug gaps in the public sector in terms of knowledge and skills. Now, on the second side, there will be a diaspora fund, which I'm going to set up. That fund will help us to deal with the problem that many people in the diaspora have when they want to come home, especially in the public sector. What happens to my mortgage? What happens to the kids and paying their school they're pretty fees? Pretty much, you know, they're, entrenched in the system. They're entrenched yeah. in the system. So that will this fund will help to subsidize their pay up to about seventy percent. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The remaining thirty percent is your patriotism gap. Hmm. You've got you to, have have, to give that. Yes, you've got to. That's what you're given. Hmm. You know, for coming home to serve your own country. Because we all give up something. I mean, when I came, I was in the diaspora when I was tapped headhunted to become deputy governor of the central bank. Mm. I, I had to give up a lot. I had to give up a business that was thriving and making money, you know. But do I have any regrets? No, I don't have any regrets. So between the commission and the diaspora fund, we will package a deal that will help Nigerians who want to come into the Nigerian public sector. But we're going to, not, we're going to focus heavily on the health care sector and the education sector. And a major drain in that right now. There is a major drain in those areas. We're not going to... Canada it. comes to mind. Exactly. People are running away to Canada. Uh, doctors, immediately they graduate. They're trying to get abroad to find jobs. I mean, that's not tired. That's mm. not good. So this is the plan for the diaspora. It's a very specific plan based on the work of the Diaspora Commission, based on the work of the Diaspora Fund that we will be setting up. So we have a plan for the diaspora. But the fact is this. The diaspora must play a role in the coming to power of people like myself mm. with this vision. 
If you sit here and you just moan and grumble, it's not good enough. But if you say you want Kingsley Morgan to be president because he understands our needs and our frustrations, put your money where your mouth is. Which comes to how do you Absolutely. intend to fund this? Yes. I didn't steal any government money like the politicians who go around spending billions because that's easy money. It's mm. your money and my money that they've stolen. I don't have that. So I need support, financial support from people in the diaspora, from middle class Nigerians to fund our campaigns. There is no way we're going to be able to make this vision come to life without your support. So it put your money where your mouth is. If you know that you want a different type of Nigeria and you feel that Kingsley Mogala has the vision, the competence, the experience to bring it about, then support him. That's what we do out here in the Western world. Mm -hmm. We support the Tories and the Lib Dems and, and, and the Labour Party. We support the Republicans and the Democrats. Why can't we support a candidate in Nigeria that we think has the vision? Don't wait. I will not be the politician that comes and funds you to come and listen to him. I don't have that type of money. It's those who have stolen it have it. I don't. You will have to support us. Mm. So that's your own contribution to making this thing happen. That's my, that's, that's, you know, I, I think it's a very important message that we must send. If the diaspora decides today that Kingsley Mongalo will be the next president of Nigeria, I want to tell you it will happen. Nothing will stop it. Because even if they say that they're contributing 100 pounds per person for, you know, 50,000 Nigerians in the UK contribute 100 pounds per person, boy, we have the money. And what do we need this money for? We're not going to use it to be buying votes, so no. It is money that will be used legitimately to push our message of change, our message of a paradigm shift. Political messaging and political advertising costs money. Mm. Logistics cost money. If we are going to put posters up in all the 36 states of Nigeria, put billboards. 774, 774 local, local governments. Is, you're talking serious money. Indeed. So that's what we're asking for this financial support for. Nothing, no rocket science. And very quickly, you want to touch on the, 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 um, the foreign debts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, the foreign debt of Nigeria three years ago was about 14 billion, 13 to 14 billion dollars. Three years later, it's $22 billion. So our foreign debt has increased by nearly 100%. Now, the reason is because the government of President Muhammad Buhari completely and utterly lacks any economic vision. They are lazy. They mm -hmm. don't know how to produce economic wealth. So because of any challenge they face, because of the oil prices, they always rush to go and borrow money. They've forgotten something. He that goes a borrowing goes a sorrowing. It's a very simple proverb. We learnt it as children, and that's the case in Nigeria today. Who's going to pay this money? This is a bondage on future generations of Nigerians. Mm. They are borrowing from China, thinking that it's cheap. What if, what if the oil price collapses tomorrow? Oil prices will rise, they will fall. Any economy that depends on natural resources is an economy that is naked. Mm. It is exposed to global shocks every now and again and can never fundamentally make progress. That's why I say that I will run an innovation-based economy. The inventions will protect the intellectual property of young Nigerians who, in, who invent things. And we will mass produce the results of their innovation so that we can have an industrial base that is generated from local technology. Thank you very much. Um, we have a caller. Hello, John. Where are you calling from? <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. I'm actually calling from London. Okay, your question for Professor Mogalu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, I've been listening to your, to your comments and uh, really, really interesting. Uh, but um, I've got some, one or two questions to ask. We can only uh, take one, please. One question. How long you have been a politician in Nigeria? So that's one of my first questions. And, you know, I do a little bit of project management. I know that these politicians come in all the time and uh, they make promises, you know, saying they're doing that and this without actually sure. uh, knowing the inner focus of what the funds are yeah. within uh, the financial constraint of Nigeria. Of of so, can I ask how do you intend to generate funds? Yes. to actually lay your plan out yes. and make sure that you make Nigeria a better place. Good. Thank, we you. Have, uh, 
Thank you, John. Can we do that in one minute? Yeah, sure. First of all, I've never been a politician in Nigeria, and that is one of my greatest qualifications to be president. Because the politicians in Nigeria have ruined us. Uh, the political habits and the economic habits are bad habits. Mm -hmm. So, But I have institutional leadership experience to manage projects, to manage risks, to build strategy, and to execute strategy. That's what Nigeria needs at this time, a technocratic type of president. Money, where will we find the money? We need to improve the effectiveness of our tax collection. Mm. We don't need to increase taxes, but we need to broaden the base of taxation. 65% of Nigeria's GDP is produced from the informal economy, not the formal economy. Mm. Meanwhile, the formal economy is the one that gets taxed a lot. Mm. But the real many people who are engaged in economic activity outside of the formal uh, sector do not pay tax. That cannot be. There must be a social contract whereby my government says you must pay your taxes as Nigerians, but here is what you must get in return. You'll get good hospitals, you'll get good schools, and you will get an economy that we're going to be moving towards a productive economy. Great. And in 30 seconds, yes. let's think of the worst case scenario. You don't win. <laughs> um, is there a possibility you could, be, you could find yourself in a situation where you have to join perhaps the winning party who want to tap into your wealth of knowledge? Would you join a winning, perhaps, APC or PDP party, would you let, join? Let me, let me uh, first of all, tell seconds, you. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Um, you never say never, but I'm in this race to win. I'm not looking for a job. If I was looking for a job, I could settle for a negotiation to be vice president or to be minister. That's not what this is about. I'm leading a movement, mm. a democratic revolution at the ballot box. We are going to win. Let me encourage you to understand. The greatest enemy we have is when we believe that things will not change, that these big political parties, the APC and the PDP, nobody can dislodge them. Now lie. We are going to defeat them because the people are tired of them. They will be. This is going to be like a David and Goliath. And we know how that battle ends. Hey, thank you so much, Professor Mogalu. Yeah, thank Professor Mogalu will be having a town hall meeting this Saturday at the University of East London, the Stratford campus. Starts at 3 p.m., goes until 7 o'clock. Come and hear the man. He has, um, he has wowed us. I wish you good luck. Thank you. It's not going to be easy. Not at all. And um, um, I hope to see you sometime soon. We'll be doing this. Absolutely. Perhaps in Lagos. Who knows? Perhaps in your presidential seat. Absolutely. We're going on a break right now. When we come back, we're going to be meeting Mr. Dean. Are you ready?